Greetings, ladies and mantle gents, and welcome to this latest edition of Tales, Tales from Outer Space. 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 And as always, I hope that you enjoy. Story number one. Talkers Make Me Hungry. Written by British Tea Company. The bar provided plenty of comfort for the rather warm temperatures outside, ranging from cool drinks, functioning ACs, rooms to sleep in, or workers in the oldest profession. The bartenders, of course, continued to keep a wary eye through his seemingly satisfied customers. A wrong word, a wrong gesture, or even the wrong person was enough to cause chairs to fly. The bartender's sharp eye caught the small vial of yellow liquid being passed around. Narcotics. They were illegal, and by all means, he should have reported it to the most clueless authorities. But that would have been an excellent way for him to be found in a dark alley, with a knife in his back. The cartel was everywhere, and his bar just happened to be on their payroll. Not that he willingly took the money, of course, but it was either agree or have his brains be on the outside of his head. The things people had to go through these days. The doors opened to reveal the group of guests. The bartender cringed for a moment as he saw his guests. In the sector of space, any idiot who didn't know how the sea trouble typically found himself mugged before sundown. And there were trouble right there. The local mob typically were gentlemanly. They never asked for trouble, just for a place to sell their products. These hooligans, oh no, they wanted trouble. They hunted for it. Thanking his lucky stars that none of the mob were in his bar, lest there be a gang war right in his home, of course, his hope turned right down the drain when one of those criminals decided to grab one of the female patrons. No one dared to move a muscle. Those guns were in plain sight, and the bartender could do nothing but feel sorry for the victim as she screamed for them to unhand her. He decided to look away. A new species entered his bar, and he sure as hell wasn't sure what this one is even supposed to be. He had plenty of white fur on his head and a bit on his chin. His skin was a tannish shade. He had quite the scars on his cheek. The bartender would have thought him to be one of those generic tough guys that ran rampant around here, had it not been for the fact that this thing was over six feet tall and wearing some kind of military-grade armor. Oh, great, a uh, mercenary. Marvelous. As though his day couldn't get any better. The mercenary got an eyeful of what was going on in the far corner before he sat himself down at the table close to the criminals, watching them as though it was some kind of sick show. Suddenly, he grabbed one of the drinks from those vermin and drank the entire cup. Naturally, they shifted attention. What in the fuck do you think you're doing, bitch? The stranger looked at them as though he was amused. His mouth curled into a nightmarish smile, revealing lines of large teeth and sharp fangs that made some of those lowlifes cringe. Drinking. This is a bar. That's my drink. Pay for it. I don't presume you intend to pay for what you're doing over there. We don't have to. I don't have to. Hey, look, fellas, we got a tough guy here. Think you're some big shot with that fancy armor and those scars? How about I suck you one? See how tough you really are, big guy. Please, be my guest, the mercenary said as he held his hands out like an invitation. When nothing came, he grabbed another one of the drinks. No bark, no bite. You're a talker. Talkers make me thirsty. The alien said nothing, only glared at the large alien. And hungry. You can chew on my fist. I'd love to. It looks delicious. No one knew what the last sentence was, literally, until the mercenary picked up the smaller one by the arm and bit right into it. The sickening crunch and even more sickening shriek caused all of the patrons to stare in shock and horror. The bloody giblets and the broken limb fell to the ground. It wasn't much of a fight. Some of the scum tried running away, but that big alien planted a few slugs in their backs with whatever monstrosity of a gun he was using. Those who tried to fight found themselves in a hole in the ground. Zang glared at the armless alien before he placed a finger in his ear. He watched their would-be victim watching him with amazed eyes. 
C Colonel August, target has been eliminated. With that, the mercenary grabbed prey and butt right into its flesh. The screams tore through the bar and ended with a gargle. The body fell to the ground, partially eaten. Zhang looked at the bartender before walking over. The alien cowered in fear of him. <laughs> don't, don't, don't eat me. Zhang said nothing as he grabbed a few napkins to wipe his mouth, dropping off a few coins at the bartender. He stood himself upright before facing the alien. The drink was good. So was the food, Zhang continued. What's your name, Queen? Queen? Very well. Allow me to introduce myself. I am Major Xiao Zhang of the Terran Republic. Our client sent us here to eliminate local crime. Oh my, it worked. You're... So... So, so you're the Terran? Indeed. The job has been finished. I am glad you chose to pay us in advance. We'll be visiting. Quain wasn't sure if it was a blessing or a curse as Zhang left his bar. The dead body still in the middle of everything. At least, he wouldn't lose his customers. They were pretty used to seeing people get shot over something as trivial as a pencil. He uh, would still have to clean up this mess, though. End of story. Story number two. You contain multitudes. Written by Because I Said So Too. I contain multitudes. Walt Whitman. I am Legion. Unknown. You have three eyes. The two you see of your world with. The inner one that lights ours. When it's not obscured by the storms of emotions and clouds of distraction and self-doubt. Our world... It's hard to describe, but you'd recognize every part of it. It's a jumble of rooms, times, and places. The majority of its inhabitants flicker in and out of sight, forms shifting and changing as they go about their lives by the light of your third eye, or beneath the clouds obscuring it. Sometimes, on a clear day, we feel the heat of your gaze, and we stare back at you. All the flickering faces look upwards with devotion and love to see you, and to be seen by your distracted and half-blind eye. When we do, we can dimly see your will through it as well. And to us, it seems to be a chaotic jumble of joys, sorrow, pain. Though there are things in your world that are so beautiful that they create an echo in ours, the ones you love the most, for example, exist here too. Perhaps as a pale shadow, though we feel real to ourselves. We know we are creatures of memory, merely flickering ethereal things. Yet we've seen our counterparts disappear from the world that we observe through your third eye. While we remain in their teeming inner world, it illuminates. When your father died... I was still here, staring upwards through the lighting and the rain, into the fishbowl circle and the third eye's iris. I too saw your mother's shocked face as she told you, and I felt our world roll beneath my feet. I screamed out that I was in here, and that I loved you. Screamed until my voice was raw, and I think you heard me. Eventually, the ground stopped moving, and the storm died down, though it rained for quite a while. When your heart was broken by your first love, she was still in here, shocked and dismayed by the callousness of her counterpart and originator. She went on a pilgrimage to find the memories that would knit the hole that had suddenly appeared within you. And though she was gone for a long time, she returned with the cherished memories that now fill that empty space. When your brother died the way he did, his counterpart within you shared your shock and horror and wept with you. He ran around in our world for years, seeking out the bricks in the oppressive clouds that covered the sky, so that he could meet your inner eye when the clouds would part, so that you would see him and know that he was and would always be here for you. When the clouds finally broke apart, you saw him smiling up at you, and he saw a twinkle in your third eye. 
that meant that you were smiling back. Those were just three of the times we fought in your behalf. There were so many more. Our group, your inner pantheon of heroes, is small but growing. Each of us have had our moment in the sun of your third eye, and each of us have fought for you in our own way. And we will do so again. For you are legion. You contain multitudes, and you are not alone. You have all of us inside of you, and you mean the world to us. Close your eyes. See us now, a multitude of familiar and beloved faces, smiling upwards at you. End of story. The algorithm reckons you should be watching this video next, and I recommend that you should be always watching my video. So, click it, click with energy! And yes, clicking that does help the channel. Thank you very much. I just want to give a quick thanks to the tier 5 patrons and channel members. Alithia, Barky, Fudic Yol, Cam Maxwell, Casper Onholtz, White Band 420, Lord Asrakal, Arcalian, and Oakfield.